pit pit stop it's a pit stop pit 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 stop it's it's a pit stop pit 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 stop it's a pit stop pit stop pit stop pit stop and your Purple Pants podcast pit stop duo, Brooke Camhai, winner of season 29 of Amazing Race, and myself are back here covering your season 35, episode 7. Brooke, how are you? I am doing very well, thank you. How are you? I am doing pretty good. Excited to talk about this episode. It was funny because in my the comments of a recent Instagram uh, post, people were like, were you and Brooke calling each other on the commercial this episode? I was like, actually, we were not. We were sharing a burger and fries and a spicy yeah. mango margarita. Uh, it was really good. Uh, Brooke and I got to hang out this week and watch The Amazing Race with some amazing racers. Uh, tell Meanwhile, us about Morgan it. and I got the memo because apparently we dressed exactly the same. I don't know how that happened, but we are in the same uniform. And then uh, we got Corey, we got Greg, we got us, and it was so fun. Um, it was really cool to actually watch with people who were on the current season because I was watching their faces as things were happening. And I was like, oh, okay, they're going to do well on this. Or, oh, wait, this is a moment that's not going to be so great. So it was kind of funny to watch with people because you can sort of sense from their expressions and their excitement as to what's coming next as to how they did. So it was a good time. Yes, I was excited. <clears throat> excited to meet Corey in person. I was like, Corey, I was trying to keep my mellowism down because I text him. I was like, what are you doing this Wednesday? And he was like, actually, I've got such a hectic day. I've got to work. I've got to tie my shoes. I've got to go up steps. I was like, oh, and mind you, I was trying not to give him spicy, ricey, like, look, sir, I'm driving 45 minutes to meet you because I was supposed to meet you a while ago. And then you had a hectic day. And then he came back and was like, actually, I'm going to be young and stay and stay out and meet you. Uh, Cause so that's because I yelled at him and I wrote him and I said, no, unacceptable. So You're 25 was... years old. Rally. <laughs> But I, he did, uh, so he, did he did, he was a great time. He was exactly what I imagined him to be fun, energetic, yeah. and it was just great hearing stories. And I felt bad because I felt like we were so excited to be here, but we was like, tell us about Rob. What is <laughs> Rob like? How, what, what does he smell like? Wait, like, you know, and so. What is his favorite food? I'm going to bring it to the food? finale. I need to be friends with your father. Like, I really, I don't, he might not want to be friends with me, but you know, I don't care. I Listen, just, we. We love Rob and Corey over here. And I felt bad because Corey had his roommates and it was a little loud in there. So when we met his roommates, one of his roommates, uh, I thought he said Robin. So I was like, hey, Robin. And then as I walked away, I could hear. He's like, it's Robbie. It's Robbie. Right. I could hear him saying like, did he call me Robin? I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But also shout out to Greg. Shout out to Morgan. Yes. I love Morgan. I, oh, she's you, so great. You and Morgan are the same uh, person. Like, I love compliment taken. Thank you. Y'all have the same energy. I love how hype Morgan gets. I love how, like, she's uh, I Morgan is the best. And I just love Greg. I, I feel like Greg is like a politician. Like, you think you love him on the show, but like, he's so personable. He's so nice. He was um, like the mayor out, of the room, right? And yeah. shout out to his best friends that were there. But yeah, so we had a great time in Brooklyn and Clinton Hall. Uh, so thank you for inviting your baby boy to watch yeah. Amazing Race with you hopefully we get to do it again in the hopefully, near future hopefully yes, I think, I think if so. not commercial breaks will do commercial breaks all day okay so this episode was this episode was what it was a <laughs> lot it was a lot a lot is an understatement it was a great episode the problem is it was one of those episodes where you can't, there's nothing you can do about the editing. Like you knew who was going home real early in the mm. episode. And I was not happy about it because you know our feelings about the ladies from Philly. Um, uh, Downers. Out of town are now out of contention. But what are you going to do? I feel like we're better for having known them. And the show was better for having had them. So this will just be our ode to Melina and Andrea. I'm so sorry to see you go, but we will be using out of towners for everything we don't want to do in life. Okay. So yeah, if I don't, if I can't, you know, don't want to go out and I'm just be like out of towner. I don't know. can't find you out of towner. Sorry. 
my crazy. my alarm clock went off this morning and i was like out of towners i was like i don't want to get up so uh we appreciate it but yeah i'm excited to see this episode and again it's funny to um again watch you know i'm from the survivor realm and so i'm used to watching survivor and i'm used to the reactions and i'm used to so it's so interesting again watching the amazing race with amazing racers and their current season is on and it's so uh again i was just enamored by how active morgan was on her family group chat like that group chat was chatting i was like peeping corey out the side of my eye as they were doing their challenges and i could see corey being like so uh again it was just it's so interesting for me i feel like i didn't pay as good of attention uh to this week's episode because being in this atmosphere it really like um I, again i'm used to like throwing watch parties for survivor and i'm used to like you know but being here or in clinton hall i felt like i could be like a fly on the wall so i felt like i was like watching the tv and then watching what Corey doing watching the tv watching morgan watching the tv trying to find greg watching the tv seeing brooke yell at the tv at this bar uh so i felt like i got the full experience well, I watched it twice, so don't worry. I took notes the second time because you know me. I don't do anything without my notes. So, sir, so. Bacon. Shout out to Bacon, Lamone, Cam High. Good one. Lamone. Because, well, because Bacon was sick when I got him. He was like a sick puppy. So we call him the lemon, but he's also fancy. So we call him Lamone. Lamone. So it's Bacon, okay. Lamone, Cam High. Good one. He's got a lot of names. It's too many names for a dog, frankly, but it is what it is. And. He's a sweetheart. So, okay. So, on to Germany. So, the teams have now been equalized, and they're flying 4,000 miles to Frankfurt, Germany. Fun fact, when I auditioned for The Amazing Race, I'm not, you know me, I'm not fast, I'm not strong, but I play smart, and I've seen every episode. So, they're like, when I was auditioning, they're like, what are some tips? What are some things that you've learned? Because you're, you know, the smart one. And I was like, never take a connection through Frankfurt, Germany was one of my tips, because without fail... In almost every season, when a team goes through Frankfurt, their flight is delayed. And they were like, oh, you really do watch the show. And I was like, yeah, but this is where they were going. So there was no, like, delay. So we didn't have right. to worry about that. Anyway, that's the first thing I thought when I thought about Frankfurt. Um, they show a stray dog. I look at Bryce and go, I want to adopt that dog. <laughs> ah! Bacon was not here for the head. Bacon, Lamont, Cam High, good with that. You it's, it, it's the neighbor's dog is outside. We can't hang out right now. Sorry. Okay. The neighbor's dog is out. Okay, we may have to edit this because that no, is just no, a this is oh, it is. You can't play with Charlie right now. They're all making an appearance. Oh my god. I live for these making moments and I live for how Brooke gets, like freaks out or gets embarrassed. I love hey, honey, it. Honey, you want a treat? Come here. Yeah. No, I know but Charlie's not there anymore. I, I love it. The dog got a play date. Okay, the dog like broke, breaking like broke. I'm trying to go see my friends. Oh, they're best friends, and it's so cute. But the problem is, like, Charlie comes in the hallway, and then she whines, and Bacon's like, let me. Bacon, please, honey. He's going to fire me, and I'm not going to get to do this anymore. It's going to make me so sad. Oh, Brooke, stop. All right. Anyway, he'll stop because Charlie went inside. I can't hear her anymore. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's the Bacon. Be Buddy, that's it. That's it. She's not there anymore. Come on. Get the shoes. Okay, so we're like, oh, 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 Bryce, you have to. End. This is, ah, this no. is so I love it. I love it. Now the other, there are like six dogs on the floor, and the I can hear the other ones barking from their respective oh, apartments, God. and they're all happy and calm. Okay, anyway. Now, real quick, random yeah. note. Do you okay. feel like when dogs bark, like, do you feel like they can communicate with other dogs? 100%. 100%. I was at my mom's house this week, and I had to walk Sunshine, and I felt like we were walking up the street, and a dog came out, and Sunshine was like, rah, 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 rah. and it didn't seem like they were barking at each other. It seemed like, I was like, it seemed as if they knew what the bark was saying. But I was like, I don't know if, you know, so I didn't know. I'm convinced they know what each other is saying. Like, I don't know why, but there is this, com no, there's a commercial out there where like, it's a dog is like, Tony, Tony, but like the people here barking, but the dogs are like, speaking hey, right. and I think that that's real. Anyway, sorry. Okay. So let's try this again. Okay. So sorry, everybody. 
We know um, next home. time we're going to have bacon go out of the apartment for this. Anyway, 4,000 miles to Frankfurt. Um, we have Greg and John are in first place. They leave at 642, followed by Rob and Corey at 725. So there's like a good 45 minutes in between. Joel and Garrett are three minutes later. Lena and Morgan, two minutes after that. So everyone's really clumped up. Todd and Ashley, 7.54. Andrea and Elena, 8 o'clock, um, who say they're just happy to be there with their best friends. And in the beginning, I start getting worried. And like, maybe this I is their swan song because they say something nice about each other. And that's what the Amazing Race does. I agree. I was like, I hope this is not a foreshadow. I hope we can pick it up. I got a little nervous seeing that right from the get-go. And then you have Steve and Anna Lee, whose claws are out this episode. <laughs> and by claw, I mean both of them. They snipe, and it's fun to watch. And then last but not least, you have Robin and Chelsea. Um, but the fun part about this is so many people have a connection to Germany. Todd and Ashley lived, Todd and Ashley lived in Germany for a period of time. Robin and Chelsea lived, or at least Robin lived in Germany for three years. Her husband was stationed there. Corey. Fun fact, speaks fluent German. How do I know that? Because at the bar, he started talking to me in uh, German. And I was like, je parle français, but not uh, well. And that doesn't really do anything when you're speaking German, because that's just two languages that won't understand each other. So that's just an aside. Anyway, they go to a travel agency to get their tickets. And first place means nothing anymore, because they're all tied up, because they're all on the uh, same flight. So that's how the episode starts. This episode is going to be great. I get excited because it is a self-drive episode. We both love a self-drive episode. You know, my first gripe of the gripe of the gripe of the gripe. I do love a good self-drive episode. Your gripe is that it's not a stick ship. Uh, yes, I, I only watch The Amazing Race because I want to see somebody stall out. I want to see somebody in their confessionals like, we've worked all this time. We've been practicing in the driveway. We've gone on the highway. And then and, it's like... Uh, <laughs> What's that? Who was that couple from that season? Is it Leo and Alana? Alana. Yeah. Okay, first of all, shout out to Leo. Uh, yeah. We love and Alana. Alana. And Alana. But yeah. I didn't get to meet Alana, but I met Leo in yeah. Florida with Florida. you. And um, He's cool. I was just, was again, so surprised at his whole vibe. And mind you, I had some spicy takes on Leo, but, you know, shout out to him. But I always think about. I believe he told him not to listen to the podcast. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cause they weren't my, like, you know, I love everybody, but I, you know, I get a little spicy about my spicy. And so I got a little spicy with Leo and Alana and I got a little spicy with, uh, is it Akbar and. Oh, Sherry. And mm -hmm. Sherry. Yeah, okay. So that's when spicy spicy came out. But I always think about when Leo and Alana were, I don't think they stalled out. It was someone else that stalled out and they no. were like, Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, why do I think it? Maybe Leo had to go help. It might have been really like, had to go like, help Leo had to like, get out of the car. car like, right. I, Damn it! Like, cause he's like, I can do this, but they cars were leaving a parking garage one at a time. And they like, were all like, couldn't get around them. Right. And he's like, what am I supposed to do? So I have to help. This is crap. Anyway, that's what. But happened. Phil, stop playing with us. Give us the manual driving cars. And in Europe, most cars are standard transmission cars. So. And, and honestly, if you go on the Amazing Race not knowing how to drive a stick shift, what are you even doing there? There are certain things you should know at this point. So I that's what I wanted to see, too. And I was watching them drive, and I was like, how is nobody having a problem? These are automatic cars. That's hmm, – does it really count? I mean, it counts. but I mean, yeah. And I love when you have to – well, I love and I hate. I love when it's a distance. I love yeah. when it – because the distance is truly – the equalizer because if you go the wrong way i was having flashbacks our first leg was self-drive leg one mm. self-drive panama and nobody i think i've told you nobody knows where the panama canal is and so we got so lost and then the best part is you don't get to see the episodes before they air so when the episode aired they actually did a montage of every team being like what do you know please Como se dice? Like, everyone was like, where are we going? And it felt so good to see everybody else also so, so lost. But this felt less good because this was this was harsh. Um, okay, so we're at the very beginning, Bryce. 
geez, sorry, five minutes of bacon barking, but he's now laying by the door, like patiently begging me to open it, but it's not going to happen right now. Okay. So they have to drive 15 miles, not that far to a ferry on the Rhine and then drive onto this ferry and go to this castle whose name I will clearly mispronounce. So I'm just not going to say it. Um, but the castle has great views. And on board of the ferry, they have to take five euros and exchange them for a bag of coins called Witten, like old school money that they will later need to use for a task for their roadblock. Now do me a favor, read that last part again. On board, they will need to exchange five euros for a bag of coins called Witten, which is like old school money that they will need to later use for a roadblock. On board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. Some teams got the memo. Some teams did not get the memo. So we have uh, uh, da, 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 da. on the first one. I who who's on the first ferry? Okay, so ferry number one. Yeah, Steve and Anna Lee, Lena and Morgan, Todd and Ashley, and Joel and Garrett. So they hey, get there fast. My my my. Like I mean, I know this is only the first stop, but there's a lot of stops this episode. Steve I loved it. But Steve and Anna Lee were practically almost out last season. And here they are making the first ferry. Yeah, they caught up. Well, everyone was on the same flight. So it was just sort of a matter of how quickly you could figure out how to get to that ferry. And so that was the first ferry. Um, Rob and Corey, however, who make it to the second ferry, have a great driving system. So Rob is driving. What Corey does is he writes the directions, hands them to Rob, has a second set of directions so that he can communicate in sign language through the uh, rear view mirror and he passes notes up to Rob as he goes because he can't speak from the back seat for his father to hear. I actually assume that Corey would be doing most of the driving, but they have got a great system worked out. Good on them. Um, again, yeah. I love how well they communicate, right? Because I would think that that would take, like in my mind, I would think that that would take so much more time and I would think that it would be harder, but I love how you can tell that they had that Rob is Corey dad because they have such a good rapport. And are you surprised that Rob is driving? Are you, no. have you been seeing no. this? Right. I'm, not surprised. Like, I I'm sure he's like, Corey, you're too slow. No. I need to do this. If you want something done, right. Do it yourself. I'm on it. Just leave it. Just, I don't worry. Just leave it alone. So anyway, I'm not surprised at all. Rob, I fully believe has the Morgan Brooke. Ashley and Todd energy like that's uh, the energy thousand percent I'm like there's no way Corey's driving I'm like have you seen Rob when Not he's today. in the tut tuts or when he's passing up he'd be like so I just knew Rob was going to drive but okay okay so then you have Lena and Morgan um Lena god love her who doesn't know her left from her right and is the first to admit that she doesn't know her left from her right um but they're doing great um, and, and I just, they wore my heart. I really, really love them. Uh, Robin and Chelsea go the wrong way and they snap at each other a little bit. They drive past the ferry. They drive past the other way. They finally find the ferry. Um, and Andrea and Melina are, they're just, lost. they're in the woods somewhere. Oh. They've made their way into the wilderness. They are very, very lost. Um, that's, that's a face. <laughs> um, yeah. So they're, they're not having it. They don't know where they're going. So ferry number two, you have John and Greg and you have Rob and Corey. And the funny part is. John and Greg are on the second ferry and they're like, oh, there's people on that first ferry. And I think Greg's like, how do you know? And he's like, that's Todd's shirt. Todd is in bright orange. Like there's no missing Todd. He's six foot. Todd God is like what. seven foot two. Right. Uh, right. And he in bright orange. And Todd's like, hi guys, how you do? Like they're just cute. The whole thing is very, very cute. When I saw that, when I saw uh, the brothers having that conversation, like how do you know that's Todd? For some reason, I was like, why the car on the ferry? Like I was, again, I was all up in, Corey, Morgan, everybody face. So I was like, wait, are you supposed to drive a car on the ferry? Like, I thought that Rob and Ashley, uh, or yeah, I thought Rob, no. I thought Todd and Ashley had made a mistake because I was like, why are they on that ferry with the car? They but are one of the only teams that didn't make a mistake. I love that your watch party was watching people watch the episodes. So that was, that's great for me. So anyway, Robin and Chelsea get on the wrong ferry. They are like 10 kilometers away from where they're supposed to be, but they're already on the boat. So there's nothing you can do. So they cross the Rhine, they cross back, then they drive and they find the right ferry. So they do, they mess up, but they do a good job of course correcting. So meanwhile, while they're on the wrong ferry and Andrea and Melina are somewhere in the wilderness, you have this roadblock where it says, um, who's ready for change? 
And so teams need to apparently, okay, so castles on this river were used as like defensive strongholds. And in order to like make money, they would collect money from traders going up and down the river. So this and, whole roadblock well, is about. All, that, look, look, when I heard that, well, first of all, I always thought castles like you, I mean, I know people live in the castle, but you know, I watch Game of Thrones. I watch uh, a lot of period pieces. I'm like, castles defend like they got the the moat and all that other stuff but when they were talking about that collecting the coins for me it sounded like they was going around to just the people being like listen you want to stay in this town give me your guten notch guten notch <laughs> okay that's what it sounded like to me it didn't sound like to make money it sounded like they was taking money they was going around can i use that can i i'm gonna be like that'll be 14 guten notch thank yes. you. i'm using that out of towners and Gutenach. Okay. Gutenach. So what they had to do is they had to take their Witten and convert it into, I don't know, something else. I wrote it down Gutenach. and pay Gutenach, right? And pay off a robber baron um, with five Gutenach. Um, So you have to solve a logic problem. I'm loving this. Meanwhile, we had to make a ladle. I'm still salty. I want logic problems. This is law school 101. And I love a good logic problem. So of course I, when I rewatch it, pause the screen and I'm like, do, 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 15. Like done Zo. I pulled a Morgan. That girl is girl, smart. I don't that know if Brooke is, is telling the truth here. Oh, I'm not, I don't know if Brooke I'm is telling lying. the truth here. I actually wrote it down. I wrote it right here. I'm like 15 Witten equals five Gutenach or whatever you want to call it. I'm like five Witten equals four of this times six because it's 24. So three equals one times five is 15. Like I got this down. So I did the math on the side because I like logic. So anyway, Annalie is up. I'm gonna murder him. Like I love it. But the neighbor knows I'm not available and she still has her dog in the hallway. Anyway, side note. So say goodbye that, to Bacon. Uh, it's his last week here on the podcast. Bye, Bacon. Yeah. So okay. So Morgan gets up there and she does the roadblock. This girl is smart. She nails it. She does it in like three seconds. She's like, I know how to do math. Screw this. But, I'm in. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, okay. One. Okay. Morgan said, I don't pay these student loans for nothing. I'm going to put my education to use. I love how everyone's at the table. Kind of like it's a group project. I Not love how her. Morgan said, I'm like, oh, this is going to boop, 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 boop. I went to the top <laughs> business school in the country. Okay. I don't have a round. This is my choice to get chance to get ahead. And she is out. Morgan. Ow. Morgan, she didn't say anything. Got her stuff. Was like, and I, I, I love. I am for this so stuff much. like this, mm -hmm. right? Like this is the competitive stuff that I love on the Amazing Race. This not is Corey on leg me. one. No, not Corey. This is Rob on leg one, where he figured out where they're going the next city, and he Homer Simpsoned his way back through the hedges. You know, remember when we talked <laughs> about that? This was Morgan Homer Simpsoning her way back through the hedges and just being like. <laughs> Nothing to see here. I was never here. You never saw me. And she's out. And out. she's repelling down the wall. And Lena's like, my sister's coming. Holy moly, how'd she do that? And Morgan's like, what do you mean, how did I do that? I'm smart. D d you know this. So anyway, she's out. And then you have Annalie, Garrett, and Todd, who are there working together. Is Rob also there? Uh, is Greg also there at that point? I think he might be. I don't know. Yeah. I, no, so anyway. Greg came with Rob and Corey. Okay. So yeah, he's not there yet. So here's the thing. This is... I'm a little, Annalie, I'm on your side. I'm always on your side. But And good for you for doing this. But Todd and Garrett, why would you let her do this? So here's what happens. There, the three of them are trying to figure it out. Todd figures it out. And Todd's like, I think it's 15, right? And Garrett's like, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, no, I think you're right. It's 15. And Annalie goes, I'll try it. And jumps to the front of the line. And she goes, I'll let you know if it's right. She didn't figure it out. Yeah. If I were Todd, I would like, B -b -b I Whoa. was surprised. Whoa that Todd let that happen because normally in these situations, Todd is so savvy. Uh, but Annalise said, I'm going to get my lick back since y'all want to send a U-turn my way. I'm going to try this 15. Todd didn't U-turn her. Shouldn't have done that to him. But they still were u turn Fine, whatever. But she's like, and they let her do it. She's like, I'll try. And so she goes next. And you know what? You don't know what's happening next. There might just be like only one person could go at a time down the buildings or down the castle. So if I were Todd, I would have been like, no, 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 you wait, but fine, whatever. They're being nice to each other, and that's fine. I like nice. With these teams, I'm cool with it because I like them all. So anyway, Annalie tries With all the teams? 
with these teams, I'm cool with it because, yeah. So anyway, Annalise scoots in front. She's like, at least she says it's right. She's like, it's right. And then Todd goes, then Garrett goes. And then uh, meanwhile, I'm going to do this a lot. Meanwhile, on ferry number three, because after they've gone on the wrong ferry, they get back on the right ferry. Um, you have Robin and Chelsea uh, who are, are now on the right ferry and are exchanging their money for Witten. And you have Andrea and Milena who are st- Still in the woods. They have. They are very much not even close to where they need to be. And this. And we're probably like a third of the way through the episode at this point. And you and I are looking at each other, and we're like, "This is not." I love that. That's the we're going to use this picture so many times. They are still in the car, so that is still an accurate picture. Um, okay, so then John and Corey and Chelsea ultimately get to the roadblock. Um, John looks at Corey and goes. I don't think I have enough coins. Like he just doesn't think it's right. Like he can't figure out the math right away. But after a few minutes, he figures it out. But Corey's response to, I don't think I have enough coins is redo your math. (laughs) And he walks away. And I'm okay with that too. They don't need to help each other at this point. And I think, and nobody's getting mad about it where it's like, he didn't help. I don't care. Redo. You do. You have enough coins. Redo your math. Redo your math. Or ask ask Morgan. Right. Well, Morgan is so long gone. Morgan is girl genius and good for her. Okay. So Corey's out. John's out. Chelsea has caught up good for her because they took the ferry the wrong way and she's caught up. But what Chelsea does here is, but I I mean, strategy or bullshit. I don't really know what to say about this. I feel like it it only works when you're there by yourself. Right. So, okay. But so what she does for anyone who didn't see it or who was busy watching other people as they watch the episode is she doesn't even try. She doesn't even give an attempt to figure out the math. She's like, I have enough coins, I'm sure. They wouldn't do this to me unless I had enough. And she just walks up and goes, six? Nope. Seven? Oh, no. Eight? Nine? Ten? Blah? (laughs) And finally, they go, correct. And I I have no problem with it. It's within the rules. You can do what you want to do. I watch the challenge, right? Mm-hmm. And this reminds me of the challenge USA. Shout out to my girl Desi and Chris Underwood. Yeah, Des- yes, Survivor I watched them win that. Good for them. In one of, I think, I believe it was Fessy and Fessy's uh, elimination between Josh, they had to do uh, where they had to do something. And they, then had they had to count to, the squares in a puzzle. Count I know the exactly. squares. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they, well, you would have to attempt it, you would attempt it and then go back. Right, Fessy kind of took this approach, but you had to at least run back to the mat and get there first. I just feel like with Chelsea, I feel like that should have been implemented. I don't feel like you should have just been able to stand there and be like, but I am mad because <laughs> that, okay, Bacon agrees with me because that's what Bacon and I would do. Chelsea, that's fine. That's fair. I mean, look, it's within the rules. You can do it. It's totally allowed. It's just sort of, I mean, if you're not, I guess if you're not a math person, find your way around it. You know what? I changed my vote. I agree with you. I agree with Bacon. Let Chelsea do what she's going to do. It worked for her. Good on you, Chelsea. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. Meanwhile, (laughs) on ferry number four, which by the way, not the right ferry, you have Andrea and Milena. (sighs) They go find the money guy on the ferry and they want to exchange their five euros. And the money guy exchanges their five euros because that's what he does. But he exchanges them for euro coins. (laughs) And then they like, have you, I mean, we was lost. Have you seen anybody else? And he was like, I ain't seen no, nobody. They was like, now this is where, hold on, wait, let me get uh, Melena's face out. Now this is where I was looking at Adria and Melena like, y'all know y'all been in that car for eight hours. Yeah. Y'all really think that when he was like, I haven't seen nobody. But I mean, kudos to them because I think you need to look for hope and things yeah. like that when you're in this situation to keep your morale high. So I am mad at them, but I was so their instinct that- was you didn't see anybody. So we must be in first, not you didn't see any money. So we must be not doing this right. So, okay. Uh, positivity. Listen, mm-hmm. I, I, I love it though. But I also I was cussing that guy out. Like you, you know, you are not the right fairy. You didn't but how, to- he doesn't know anything. Production doesn't go to every fairy in but Germany I and say, mean... we're going to have some people coming through. All he knows is they went to him and said, are you the change guy? I need to change five euros. And he said, okay, that's his job. That's normal for him. 
Um, and they said, did you see anybody else on the race? And he's a like, whole production team comes up and you see these. No, like he no, he just wanted to be on TV, but he was nice looking man. So I'm not mad. So thank you, Andrea <laughs> Elena, because, you know, when I'm on the amazing race, I want to make sure that I control every attractive man I see. Oh, that my partner did that. There were every time we saw a handsome man, he's like, oh, and I was like. Focus, what are you doing? One of our guys who greeted us in um, Greece was a very handsome man, like in a toga. And I was like, now you may flirt. Here you go. We're, the leg has ended. Feel free to shoot your shot. Well, I'm gonna get my Guka notch first and then I'm gonna say you attractive. But that guy knew, like I just felt like he could have just gave him a little, uh, I, I can exchange it if you want, but I digress. Oh, well, that's where they are. Okay, so. Robin, this is the next thing that happens. And if you defend this, actually, I think I defend this too. I don't know. Robin and Chelsea have caught uh, up and they see John and Greg who have just gotten directions. So John and Greg go down the castle or John goes down the castle wall. John and Greg get directions as one should. If you're not stopping and getting directions before you do a self-drive, I don't know what's wrong with you. Like there are just wrong ways to go and things are not written in English and German is not an easy language unless you're Corey, who apparently is fluent in German. Good on you. Um, so Robin and Chelsea see John and Greg and they go, let's follow them, which, okay. So here's my thoughts on this. No, I see your face. I know you have thoughts. Let me just say this. I said this before. I'm listening. When you're on the amazing race, you're all going to the same place. So how do you not follow someone who's right in, right in front of you? How do you not, you're not even, I mean, should they have gotten their own directions? Probably, but you're all going to the same place. You're not following, you're going to the same place. There's, you shouldn't have to go a different way just so you're not following somebody. But in this case, what they do is like, don't lose them. We're just, we're not even gonna try and find our own way. We're just gonna follow. So it's a little bit of a gray area. What do you got to say, Glass? It ain't a gray area for me, right? I, first of all, I'm not mad at the method. I'm not mad at the method at all, right? Mm -hmm. I do feel like from the uh, seasons that I have watched, if you are going to follow somebody, if you are going to collaborate with somebody, I believe you should at least, it's like, okay, now I'm going to take it somewhere else. It's like on TikTok, you know, everybody is making stuff up. Everybody's doing their own thing. Sometimes there are a lot of small creators that create little <laughs> gluten notch and dances. Where <laughs> and then there come big creators that are like, oh, I love that. And sometimes the big creators will, hey, everybody, I just did the gluten notch dance. And then people so they give think, credit. Well, some sometimes they don't, but it, okay. you should. The big creator should be like, I got this gluten not dance from bacon. And so I'm not mad at them following because Lord knows I would be following. However, I would roll out my window. I would wave and just kind of sort of give them that acknowledgement that I'm following them. Because I just feel like that's just kind of how I feel. And especially with those two teams, yeah. because one... On multiple occasions, people have asked, have asked you for help. For help right? Y'all have said, I don't see Ooh, I'm you. I'm not here. I'm high. You I'm don't high. see me. Yeah. But now, yeah. all of a sudden, when you don't want to look for directions, you, you can see people now. Now you can see. Now, now you can see. That's my only problem with you. <laughs> now you can see. I think what they should have done, I think I would have felt much better about this. A if, simple way. Or, simple way. or, hey guys, just, if you need us, if you need us later, we got you too. Like, just a little, and you know what? They probably wouldn't, they're probably lying, who cares? But at least say right. something. Not like, just follow Like, thank me. you for this. We got you back later in the leg if you need us. Just something. Even if it's completely hollow, which it might have been and whatever. That's okay. all I'm saying. But I got you. Again, I have hard criticisms, but I probably would do the same thing. But again, I would give a courtesy even if they didn't see. It's the attempt. You ever like, you ever be driving down the highway? This is my biggest like, pet peeve, Bryce. Tell it. Say it. It's my biggest driving pet peeve. Driving if I let highway. you in, you wave because I will always let you in. I am a courteous driver and I will let you in and when you don't wave, oh, you're going to get like a nasty look. I'm going to pass you and I'm going to go 
I let you in. It's rude. Okay. You're rude. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Or sometimes. The, and I will wave like through the sunroof. I'll wave. I will always do the wave because I feel very strongly about a few things. And this is one of them. Courtesy I, wave. I agree. Sorry. Now, mind you, my scenario is a little different because I'm the type of person that's like, it's a long line. You think I'm just getting in that lane? No, I'm going to all the way to the front. And it's oh, wave. But I mean, it's a weird way, right? Because I don't really look back. I just go, uh, okay? It's really like, stop. The queen is coming through. But I acknowledge. I don't even look back because I know they're cussing me out because it's like, and okay, I know we're getting off subject. but <gasps> No, but that that's also- true. Like the courtesy wave is very important. The courtesy wave is, it makes all the difference in the world. It really does. It and really what pisses does. me off though sometimes, Brooke, now you got me hot, right? If somebody is trying to get over and you want to be one of those cars, it's like, and not letting them over. Well, sir, I'm putting my whole car there. So I also, are you going- I also sometimes do that because I don't like people who cut the entire thing if I've waited in the line and I'm like, uh-uh. My, uh, but then I'll let them in eventually because well, I don't want because them Because you have traffic. to because yeah, it's yeah. like, now mind you, I'm that car getting over. And it's like, sir, I know you feel like, or ma'am, or them, or right. they, I know you don't feel like you want to let me in, but I'm getting in. And so, like, it's like, so are you going to hit my car? Like, please tap my car so I can How open. far are you willing to take this? Listen, I'd be waiting. I'll play this game of chicken with you, and then who's who's going to balk who's first? Who's going to win? And then sometimes <laughs> I, I hate when they win, and then all the other cars zoom by. So now I'm just holding up traffic. Right, you're again. just sitting in the next lane, and people are like, oh, this asshole. Ooh, I shouldn't say that word. But Sorry, Mom. When I get in, I do, you know, give a little. But that's all I'm saying Chelsea and them should have done. Was yep. just a little an attempt. So I don't really like that. And especially when you ain't trying to help other teams. I feel that. Courtesy okay. wave right. for the future. Courtesy wave. Okay. So are we, are we? You got me hot. I'm like. I know. I'm like, I know. Like, I know. Like, I, it's like warm in here now. You got me hot. I didn't have water today. Okay. So the I teams mean, are now. You got some guten for some water because you know who will get you some water. <laughs> That would be Joel and Garrett. I have five good notch. Can you please get me some water? Okay, so they have to drive now from the castle, and they have to find this garage um, so that they can go to the next test. No one can find this garage. Okay, like, so that, here was my next question. Okay. Is finding the garage the detour? What? Is finding the garage the detour? I know, right? This seemed to be the hardest thing of the whole episode. Nobody so, can, well... Or the fairy, because meanwhile, <laughs> hold on, wait, 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 ah, wait, hold on, okay, got it, got it, got it. They've now, they've now crossed the river and found the castle. Actually, um, that's a lie. They haven't even done that yet. They're still like bopping around on that ferry, thinking they're in first place, and they're trying to find the castle. They're on the other side of the river, trying to find the castle. While everyone else has done that roadblock and is trying to find the garage. So Lena now, wait, who still on. can't tell her left from her right, okay, wait, has no. gone the wrong way. Put your uh-huh. left hand up. Put your right hand up. Put your right hand down. Put your left hand down. Put your right hand up. Put your left hand down. The left one, up. it makes an L in front of you. It's okay. left. <laughs> Le- Lena, girl, we love you, but we just, you know, left. But she's cute about it. She at least goes, right. you know I don't know my left from my okay. right. And she's- but So I do empathize with Lena in this because sometimes I feel like when I'm driving and Wendell is navigating, sometimes, you know, you like, I will understand you're telling me left, but I can't make a left, so I'm just whatever. But I just love Morgan. Morgan was like, yo, bro. I said, I said left. left. You went right. Bro, what is you doing? I was like, oh. like, you know, I don't know the difference. And she's like, oh, get out. Just get out of the car. I'm going to drive the car. And Lena's like, you can't read the map and drive the car. So I'm get, get out. I am on. You cannot. You don't know your left from your anyway. They're sniping, but they're so cute about it. Unlike oh, Steve and Annalie, who okay, also can't find the okay. garage. Dude. Listen. Dude. Listen. <laughs> I felt like we Woof. were watching Anna Lee come home from school she and she curfew. went outside to play with her friends. And Steve said, hey, 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 is your homework done? And Anna Lee was like, I'll do it when I'm going to do it. Hey, you don't sass me, girl. Get back your net. Okay, I was. First of all, when he was talking, okay, I'm acting like I wasn't watching, but I clearly tuned in on this part. I don't know why when they were going back and forth, I sat up in my the, my bar suit. I was like, 
sorry, I, Steve. Sorry. I felt like he was talking to me. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But I love it because my mom will get me together in a heartbeat. My mom's one of her sayings used to be like, I'm not one of your little friends. Uh, and listen. My dad and I would have been the same way in this car, by the way. Same way. Dad, you didn't. And then he would have been like, but I said, and don't talk to me like that. And I'll be like, you don't talk to me like that. I am woman. Hear me roar. And then so it would have been like a whole Steve and Annalie. I loved it this episode because they've just been everyone's just been so nice. And now, now not today. So now wait, did Steve actually get he got in the front of the car and started driving too? Did right? he start driving too? I don't know. Now, they were going at it. They now, were going at it. Now, since everybody was starting to go at it, you know who I was waiting for to kind of start revving up, but we didn't even get to see it. Who? Todd and oh, Ashley. Todd I, just, I knew. Yeah. I was like, uh-oh, we about to get something, and we didn't get anything. I'm like, let me because find out. Because they love each other, and they're so cute, and I want nothing but the best for them in everything in life. And if they make it to the finale and win this thing, I won't be mad about that at all. Oh, listen, I won't be mad at all. Big fan. Okay. Todd so. would be like, we, we won, Ashley, but... We could have been you better. You could have done that. She's like, come done. on, man. We won a million like dollars, but we had to pay the taxes. So, I mean, we yeah. could have got their fa- But I love that. Taxes are you. not our friend. Okay. Yeah. So, Greg and John get there first, and which means Robin and Chelsea get Robin and Chelsea get there first because they're just right behind them. And so, yeah, they, but the thing is, that, now they can't see. The thing is this they think they're fighting for less because everyone has been so lost and nobody's seeing each other. Like, Greg and John are only seeing Robin and Chelsea. And uh, at some, Steve and Annalise, I think see Lita and Morgan. Like people are only seeing like one of the, oh, these two have seen nobody. Poor Andrea and Milena. Oh, they're still in the car. This is, I, honestly, this is not even a joke. I wrote this in chronological order. They are still looking for the castle. So anyway, Greg and John get there first. And then there's a root info, which is, they love how many clues there are this episode, it's which is they have to join this carnival, ride this bicycle with a horse head, which is so kitschy and ridiculous, and throw roses to a crowd of people at a party. Right. It's so cute. The outfit's adorable. Yeah, I don't know how is. anyone didn't steal their outfit. I would have totally stolen my outfit. I stole a shirt that we wore in Venice on a gondola. Not stole. They let me keep it. But this outfit was great. That's a Halloween costume next year if anyone took it with them. So here's something I don't approve of. And here uh -huh. is where the BS meter goes uh -huh. to the max. Robin and Chelsea have followed Greg and John to get here completely followed them, which, okay, I don't have a problem with the follow. I have a problem with the lack of the courtesy wave. Then they get here and what these teams go one at a time to ride their horse, bicycle, horsicle, whatever you want to call it around this obstacle course in the room while another team member throws flowers. Robin scoots right in front of Greg and John. I have a problem with this because she <laughs> she's like, she says, okay. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. I guess if you think you're fighting for last. Well, maybe. right. It's a competitive fine, race. And we fine. Said, you don't and know where you are. In, I, okay. We said with the husbands and the sisters when they were in the pergola race and we were like, you know, I would have paid the money and jumped out. And so I'm not. Okay. So in actuality, I'm not mad. But. Every neighbor, every neighbor today. It's honestly the seventh floor here is just a they're having like a hall party, but whatever. So I, I but I guess if you're fighting for last or you think you're fighting for last, you do what you got to do. But and maybe if this were other teams, I would be more forgiving. I don't know. That's possible. I just Bacon. also I take onus less off of the friends. And I put more onus on the brother. To say, I, get out of our way. What are you doing? You just followed I, us here? Yeah, okay. Okay. I would have been like, ah, 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 Excuse me. Have you ever, okay, now my, I don't know why I got all these antidotes, but have you ever been in a grocery store and it's the self checkout line? So it and you have really one thing and the person in front of you has 50? <laughs> so, well, okay. I'm Sorry. the person with 50, but. <laughs> No, you ever know how, like, when you're in the stuff checkout line, like, there isn't, like, there is a line, but the aisle, like, people are walking by, so you sometimes have to stand, like, back in the aisle, and then somebody yes. will just walk up and think that they're next. Is that then you? I, I will take you? my car so fast. I, 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 oh, I, yeah, no, no, no cuts. I Thank have you. made mm -mm. so many scenes in the supermarket. Not scenes, but I'm with I I'm with politely. You. Line's back I, there. Line's listen, back there. Thanks. 
Yeah, sorry. My best friend was like, there. you yeah. just cussed out an elderly man. I said, I didn't cuss him out. I just, I said, I just let him know. I mean, but also he's been around a long time. He should know better. That's my thought. My friend was like, you should let him go. He's just getting juice. I'm like, it's well, a That's principle. also true. How much time does he have left, Bryce? Come on. I mean, but let no. Let the man drink his juice. It's the principle because I just, but you know, bless his heart. And I, <laughs> so I ended up going and then he went and he couldn't figure out how to scan. And so I did scan it. his okay. juice. Okay. Had he went in front of me, I wouldn't have been able to assist him with his juice. Oh, so it behooved him to not cut you. I got it. I'm really, we're really seeing both sides of the coin today. I like this. I've, I'm sort of a fan of all of these little side right, I know, conversations. Sorry. Okay, so Robin and Chelsea pass Greg and John, but they're all having fun. Greg is having the time of his life on this horse. They're just enjoying it. And I think it looks like a fun time, even though, and good for them, they think they're at the back. They're still having fun with it. So... Then Todd and Ashley get there. Rob and Corey get there. Corey is on the horse. Rob he is just throwing these <laughs> flowers like he is Miss America. He is having the best time. And Corey is doing his little confessional going, nothing makes me happier than seeing my dad throw flowers to his adoring fans. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Rob, and he's like, uh, pick it up. Pick it up. Let's go. We're done here. So I, Again, I also love talking to Corey this week. Sorry, you know. Yeah. He's Thing that and I also love how like I'm like so how has the reception been like have you been receiving so much love and like you know and Corey's like honestly I'm just the president of the Rob fan club because people just love my dad you're like and I'm over like, there too <laughs> I'm like has it always been like this and Rob and Corey was like yeah my dad has always had this like people just love his dad and I can see why yeah but we love Corey though Oh, yeah, totally. Corey's got a really great personality. He's, like, very warm. He's very welcoming. He was fun to watch with. Good people. Actually, Corey, Morgan, Greg, they were all really, really fun. They're just lovely, lovely humans. So They are. And Corey great. reminds like me for my survivor people. He reminds me a lot of Xander. Oh, I knew like, you were going to say that. I feel like him and Xander are, like, they're the same person. Just very happy-go-lucky. Happy-go-lucky, just nice, just friendly, just, like, yeah. Yeah, so fan. So, okay, so when you finish this horsicle thing, you have to make your way on foot, thankfully, because the car part is done, to this bridge, which is one of those lock bridges, which I just think is so cool. They have some of these around the world where people put, like, locks of love on a bridge, and you write your, your initials, and what? You don't like this? What's the thing? No, because I went to Europe before, and, you know, I went on a European trip, and I think it was in Stockholm. Okay. And they had a bridge, and you know, me and my partner at the time, we put a lock on there, and I uh, would like to go take it off. But anyway. Well, let's go to Sweden. We'll find that lock. It'll be our own little personal detour, and we will take some, what do you call it? The the things that cut the lock? What is that? Oh, I got the key. Oh, I got the key. Oh, you've got the key. Oh, okay. I got the but key. But wouldn't it sort of be more fun to, like, break the lock? and throw it into the river. Don't litter, Forget kids. That lock. Okay, that lock's garbage. The next one will be the right one. I feel it in my bones. Meanwhile, <laughs> at this point, yeah, no, put the other one up. Meanwhile. Oh, hold on, wait. <laughs> ah, hold on, wait. I can't have you do my girls like that. Hold on, I'll wait. Hold on. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, it's, okay. Okay, so meanwhile, Andrea and Milena, I guess, are like close to the castle, but they so they see the castle, but mm. they don't realize that mm. at this point they still mm. have taken the wrong ferry. So just cut to them for 10 seconds. And now we're back at the lock bridge. So okay. you we are at the lock bridge, right? Um, while Joel and Garrett, Lena and Morgan, and Steve and Annalie are still lost. They have not found the horsicles yet. Um Steve and Annalie find it at the same time as Lena and Morgan, or Morgan and Lena, because Morgan at this point has decided to drive because Lena doesn't know left and right. God love you. It's it's difficult. There are things that are hard. Telling time is hard. Left and right is hard. I get that. Um, so Steve and Annalie get there right before uh, Morgan and Lena. They Steve is on the horse. Honestly, this is what they needed. This moment forced them to like just lighten up a little bit, and they have a little confessional where they're like, you know. We were too hard on each other. This a little lighthearted fun is what we needed. And now they're sort of back on track and they love each other again. And uh, Morgan is on the horse and Morgan is biking so fast that Lena's like, you need to slow down. And Morgan's like, you need to speed up, girl. Like this is enough is enough today. Like, let's just, we need to get out of here. And then Joel rides the horse in seventh place. And all three of those teams are out of there and head toward the bridge. Right? Okay. So yeah. 
And yes. Like, okay. So when you get to the bridge, there's another roadblock. If you did the first roadblock, your partner has to do this roadblock. This episode is so chock full of stuff and I like it. Yeah. But I, I love that we got that note because we haven't get, been getting that note a lot where if one partner does one roadblock, the other partner has to do another one. I'm sure that has been the rules, but I like when they Yeah, we had that. So it's very rarely a thing. They don't usually have two roadblocks in an episode because it's usually one roadblock, one detour, some rude information, and you're there. When but there's Phil's two roadblocks, this is, exciting, this is an like, exciting season. Even well, there's a lot lied. to do in Germany. And so I like that they peppered in some extra stuff. So in one of our, we had in our second to last leg, I did the first roadblock. And so the second roadblock was if your partner did this one, you got to do the other one. Fine. So it says who's feeling locked in. So you have this lock bridge with, I don't know, 6 million locks on it. You have to find a lock that has a little amazing race insignia on it and then figure out the combination. And the clue is just, it's the number of like the oldest and most famous Cologne in Cologne. Okay. The answer is 4711. Most teams go to ask someone and Google it. Great. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I was going to say, I don't know which team it was. I don't know if it was Morgan and Lena or if it was Rob, Cor Rob and Corey. But I know when a team got there later and they were like, I soon realized, like, I'm spending all this time in the front. If we're later in the pack, let me keep running down the mountain. That's Lena. She was Lena, smart about right. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very so smart because the first teams are going to take the closer ones. Yeah, for her, her right, but she know her far from her close. So from shout her, out to my she girl knows girl. near from far. So yeah. good for you and good. She did. She did a very good job on this. I wrote down that she nailed it. Okay, so Greg gets there first. Um, he thinks he's found the amazing race lock, and then he realizes it's just a lock with a little Spanish flag on it, which is also red and yellow. And he's like, "Well, that's not great." And then Robin gets there second. She is running. This girl can run like she is going to take you. If I ever played football, I feel like she would be the person you do not want to come up against because she has a look of determination on her face because they think they're last. So she's running like she is going to take somebody down. So they ask people, they Google the answer, and then Ashley gets their third. She asks Robin what to look for, and Robin oh says, go that way. I mean, okay, I guess, I, I, I guess. You know you're not last at this point. Like, just, I, I would probably at least help a little bit. I don't know. I don't I'm go that way. Duh. Of it. Right. Duh. Uh, I mean, because. It's similar to Andrea and Melania, Melena, when they were like, watch the demonstration. Chris Cross, but oh, Chris Cross. sometimes it's just the way people like it's your delivery, not how you say it. It's That's like, true. You know, it's not what you say. It's, it's how, how you, you say, say and how you say is not coming across great there. But uh, again, editing is real. So I don't know. Maybe they're just the nice people on the planet. It's possible. I, I look forward to meeting them. Anyway, um, Ashley finds it rather quickly. She Google. She asked someone to Google the number. Then Rob shows up. And I think this is a great saving grace for Rob because Rob is going to have trouble communicating with people and ask them to Google it unless he just says, like, can I borrow your phone? And someone gives it to him. Um, but most people do not speak American Sign Language. I speak so little of it, but I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to, like, saying, hi, my name is Brooke. Nice to meet you. And I've been practicing. So, Rob, when I meet you, I've been practicing. Let, can we see it? It's just, hi, my name is Brooke. Brooke, so I can do that. Okay. And, but that's like, it's, I don't know much. All I got is, yeah. now this might not apply to Rob. Just but thank I'm, you. You can do that. But I'm working on it. You are a beautiful mm -hmm. girl. Okay. But, <laughs> so I, I, I'm still maybe, practicing. Maybe learn some other words. What? Not girl, but that's cool. That's, I mean, he'll take it. I feel like, I feel like Rob will appreciate the fact that we tried. We are trying. Well, I mean, I'm going to learn more, but yeah, I'm just, no, no, that's, yeah. that's the sentence that I can, I got down pat. That's, you do have that down pat, which is great. So anyway, Rob sees Ashley and thinks, I'm going to try and see if maybe she can help me. Right. Um, and so he goes over to Ashley and Ashley writes the answer for him because, and honestly, I don't know that she would have done that for other people, but everybody loves Rob. I feel like Rob can do no wrong. So she just gives it to him and Rob goes to, into the camera. He's like, well, that was nice. I didn't expect that, but you don't get what you don't ask for. That's my motto in life. So ask for it. Worst that could happen is somebody says no, no. But she gave him. I love that judge. That judge just. I just. I will never get over that. No. Okay. So anyway, yeah, she helps Rob. Meanwhile, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is the thing. The 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 pick. Meanwhile, 
It was kind of far away. There we go. Andrea and Milena have found the castle. Yes! Everyone else has been through the horse, the locks, the castle robot. They have found the castle. I, uh, uh, it was their walk up the hill for me that kind of like, I, uh, it was so defeated. I just was like, and I'm like, they don't even know that it's not, it, they don't even have the money yet. I was like, oh. Well, so here's the thing. The Amazing Race will not always put the right number of clues in the clue box. They will sometimes put extra clues in the clue box. Now, I believe that it is to make teams not necessarily realize when they're in last place and to keep up their spirits and give them hope. So what we have since found out is that when Andrea got up there to do the roadblock, there was still another clue in the clue box. So they still didn't know they were in last place. But she went to do the roadblock, which was take your witten and turn it into, what was it? Gefluxion slurgen? Gurkenstock. <laughs> Gorgon stock, sure. So, yeah, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, no. So she gets there and she's like, This is, oh no, this is not right. Mm -mm, let me read my clue. <laughs> and she's like, Witten, what is, I don't have Witten. And so they're in trouble. So she has to go back down and she's like, We didn't do this right. We messed something up. On the ferry, we were supposed to get Witten, a bag of something. And so, oh, they have to go all the way back, back across the river, find the right ferry, get on that ferry, get their bag of witten, go back to the castle. Can you imagine what that, what the conversation in that car ride was? I, it's just, I would be in tears. Like, but again, there was still another clue in the thing. So maybe, maybe somebody was, had more of a day than they did. I, I don't know. Maybe that's what I would be thinking if there's a clue left. But again, I know what the Amazing Race does and that there's extra clues. So I probably just would have been dejected and crying and cursing and whatever. So they're on their way back to try this again. While that's happening, Rob has now found 4711. Steve is on the bridge looking for everything. Um, he did it rather quickly, actually. And at this point, Andrea and Melina have found the right fairy, and they have got their bag of Witten, and they're excited. So while that's happening, Lena and Joel are at the bridge, and they think they're battling for last place because they've seen other teams go, but nobody has seen Andrea and Melina. So for all they know, they're way far ahead, and they've done all this already. So Lena gets uh, – help and gets the code really, really fast. She's the one who realizes far is better than near, goes all the way to the end, finds her thing, and comes back. Joel, God love Joel. Uh, Joel uh, ran everywhere. He went uh, up the bridge, down the bridge, looked over the bridge, thought he was going to jump off the bridge. He was getting very frustrated, but stayed calm about it. He's like, I wonder how much more I have in me before I actually lose my whole mind. And, but he was like having fun with yeah. himself and he was keeping positive and he didn't give up. And he didn't get angry. And I give him a lot of credit because this, you know, when you get there first, there's eight locks. When you get there potentially last, you're looking for one. And that is really dejecting. He said he was right. having flashbacks to when he was doing that tile challenge and he couldn't find his tile. But this is even worse as far yeah. as I'm concerned because no one's taking tiles. You all had a different tile. This is, there's, there's very few left. And for all he thought, there was one left. Now, you think that would be the end of the episode. Is that not the end of the episode? No, sure no. is it. Because they haven't had a detour. Well, here it is. So this episode is so jam-packed. I love it. Two roadblocks, many root informations, and now your detour. So one side of the detour is called Just for Kicks, and where they have to play like dart soccer. I've never heard of this, but I think it's really cool. And you have to kick four soccer balls onto a dartboard and – like an inflatable dartboard for a total of 66 points. This is flipping hard. Uh -huh. This is hard. First of all, math. So I thought Morgan was going to do it because that girl is good at math, but also soccer. So anyway, and the other one, by the way, is called matter of taste, which is you have to sample nine mustards. First of all, if it's not honey mustard, I don't want anything to do with it. And then identify them by their German names. So this is German. Yeah. A Gluckenstock. This is German and eating. And, you know, memory and mustard. I mean, I, I mustard is not my jam. I don't put mustard on things. It's Well, I was on my high school varsity soccer team. So I think what? I would have opted to do Start soccer because soccer, mm -hmm. uh, that's my love and passion. But I love eating and I don't know. That would have been. 
little I probably would have gone to the mustard, even though I really dislike mustard oh because God. I'm pretty good with languages and I'm very good with memory. And while I am coordinated, very clumsy, but coordinated, it's a very weird thing. Good at sports, but not, I will fall over my own two feet. Which You don't like a spicy brown mustard on a burnt hot dog or a hot sausage? Okay. First of all, you're going to hate a, this. Hot what? dogs should have ketchup on them. That's my feeling. Ketchup and only ketchup. and oh Or like a Chicago dog. I don't like sauerkraut. I don't like mustard. Oh. I don't like those little cornichon oh. pickles. It's a whole, I think, oh. genre of taste that's not oh. for me. Although, I do make a really good balsamic vinaigrette dressing, and there is spicy stone ground mustard in that. And so I like it in things. I like mustard flavor, but I don't like mustard by itself. Oh. Ketchup. I know. Matt does not believe in ketchup on a hot dog and thinks ah! I'm weirdo. I know, but I like ketchup on a hot you dog. You need ketchup and mustard and a little cheese, and you need the hot dog burnt. I'll try that. Next time you're, I'll try that. Combo stuff. I will try that. Okay, fine. So anyway, you got to eat a lot of mustard. You have to figure out what they're called in German, and you have to get – so Steve and Annalie, I know we're <laughs> jumping ahead to Steve and Annalie, but they're pretty funny because their accent, the, the <laughs> teacher guy is like, not getting what they're saying because they have like a southern twang and they cannot pronounce these right but they're having fun with it they've stopped yelling at each other father daughter love is back again so anyway rob and Corey go to the the dart foot dart thing and todd and ashley also go to foot darts right it's pretty quick that todd and ashley feel like, feel like they should not be at foot darts because and you know what todd i give a lot I was of shocked. clap to todd because instead of being like suck it up and figure it out He's like, okay, honestly, I didn't think about this. This is not for her. Uh, my mistake. Let's go do the other one. Like, because his instinct is I play basketball. I'm sporty. I'm, I can do this. And he's like, this is not just me. I have to realize we're a team. We're going to go do the other one. And they go switch. And while I don't believe in switching most of the time, this was a very smart decision. And good on you. No blame. Just this is not the one for us. So they hop to the other. Rob and Corey decide to stick it out. I just, you, th I just, you think Rob was going to leave? You think Rob was going to let them switch? I knew they were going to stay. No, but uh, they and they had a really good, like uh, they're just they're just so hot. They had such a good feelings about it. Corey realizes after a few times of getting it wrong, like you got to play it like darts, where right. you just darts is you just basically move from here downward. So running starts are not the answer. Stand kick, and he has Rob go first, and they can figure out where Corey needs to go based upon Rob's kicking. So. They did great. Whilst they are doing that, meanwhile, <laughs> Andrea, yeah, has gotten to the castle mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and um, done her Witten thing. She's figured it out. And they are now, she is repelling down the castle and they now have to find their way to the carnival. Remember that where everyone was like four hours ago? They're now trying to find that. So, but they're still staying positive. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody is having a worse day. Somebody's not, but whatever. So anyway, Greg and John are at the mustard with Robin and Chelsea, who have followed them everywhere. Um, okay, so they're having fun, like, memorizing all these mustards. I think they're realizing that the mustards are in a particular order when they're doing the memorization. So it was more about memorization than taste for them. Um, Robin and Chelsea, it looks like they had to do this, like, 300 times. But Greg and John finished first. Robin and Chelsea finished second. Todd and Ashley, even after having gone to the wrong detour for them, go to this one, speed through it, and nail it. And it looks like they're having fun with it. I guess they really like mustard. While they're doing that, Rob and Corey finish fourth at the soccer. And then Steve and Anna Lee get, or finish fifth at the mustard, even though they can't pronounce anything. And they're laughing and having a good time. Then Lena and Morgan are at the mustard. Um, they look like they want to vomit. Like they are not loving the mustard which is how I would be during this, but they do it. They power through it. They do great. They decide to just carry their, when you finish the mustard challenge, this guy who gives you your clue was like, what was your favorite mustard? I would have been like, just. I would have been I like, give me, it. give just, me theirs. I, I would have been. You have mine. Anybody want mine? Fine. So then they get like a, a brat with their favorite clue. mustard and they're taking theirs with them to the pit stop because that's smart. Whereas Joel and Garrett, who are convinced they're last at the mustard, still decide they're going to have fun with it. They are enjoying themselves. They get their clue and they stand there and eat their brats because they're like, eh, we don't have anywhere we need to be. So we're just going to stand here and enjoy it. And I'm thinking, guys, I, just, 
just listen. You should know by it. now mm -hmm. that they need to be hydrated and they need to be fed well in order to operate well. So I am not mad at this at all because I, I would mean, be in my eat glitch. while you walk, man. <laughs> Come on, do two things at once. Anyway, when you're finished with that, um, you have to go to the pit stop. The pit stop, however, is a chocolate museum. Now that. I would eat. Give me five pounds of chocolate, which is probably actually really disgusting. Make that a roadblock. I'll eat all your chocolate. Don't right. give me less. I, mm -mm. I kind of was a little disappointed in that. Like, I'm like, I and felt like if we're dessert. near the chocolate factory, chocolate. Mm -hmm. have them dip the chocolate and make plates or something. I don't know. That's Or even just your team number one. Here is a piece of chocolate. Like, congratulations. And apparently it smelled so good. Like, the air of chocolate was just everywhere. I don't know how they didn't eat the chocolate. So. John and Greg get there first. Congratulations. And they get $4,000 each as their prize. Robin and Chelsea, because they follow, get there <laughs> second. It's fine. I, I really have no issue with them. We would have done the same. You're going to the same place. I know. Don't yell at me. We're all going to the same place. Todd and Ashley get their third. Robin and Corey are fourth. And they get to the mat like just after Todd and Ashley. Steve and Anna Lee, fifth. So they're climbing out. Lena and Morgan, even though they don't know which way is left and right, get their sixth. Love them, love them, love them. Joel and Garrett get their seventh. And they're like, we've had a great time. Thank you so much for the experience. And Phil's like, you're not done. Remember when I told you you were going to go to a new country? Well, you are because you're still in it. They start to cry. They cry. It's so sweet. They're so shocked. The look on Joel's face is just like pure shock, pure happiness. Garrett can't even speak because he's crying. It's so cute. And unfortunately, at the meanwhile, <laughs> oh, uh, Melena and Andrea have found the carnival. So they're, they're nowhere near the end of this leg of the race. And when they get there, Phil is, the party is over. Like they made it look like Nobody's cleaned up this party. This is a house party after all the kids have left, but before the parents have shown up and you need to clean up, Phil is waiting for them. This is what I was like, what boggled me so much was that like from the carnival to where they were at, it was a distance, right? So that means like all the teams finished and Phil still had time to go all, I was like, oh. There was time. So Phil, they were eliminated, which is a very sad term for if every other team is checked in and there's really no point because everyone else has done their thing. Phil will go to where you are on the race course and tell you, you know, you're done here. So the carnival is over. They don't get to move on, but they left with such grace and kindness and love for each other. We know that they tried for so long to get on the race three times and they've been fans since the beginning. It was lovely to know them. And I'm sad that I'm not going to hear. I hope somebody else picks it up. I hope Todd and Ashley are running around on the next leg going out of towners. Out of towners. You know, Robin and Chelsea going to take it. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, truly a delight for, yeah. first of all, Milena lives five blocks away from me. Uh, so that's my neighbor. Uh, Andrea is such a joy and a treat. And for them to go out there and do their thing Philly style, in my opinion, they're the winners because Philly represents Philly. I love them and I love their energy. Uh, it was really sad to see them. Too. But yeah, see, Bacon misses them. Not happy. Well. He's not happy about this. And wow. So he just really didn't shut up this episode. I'm real sorry. Hey, Bacon. It is quite all okay. right. So, and yeah, I think so, too. I honestly, I love when super fans are on the race. I hate to see them go. I love just the positivity, the love, the energy. This is family you choose for yourself. And you can just tell there was no, I mean, I like that there was no blame. There was no, you know, uh, fault. It was just, we're in this together. And today was not our day. And it was just so graceful and wonderful. Yes. And they will be missed. But if you think that that's the last time that you're going to see them, you are wrong. You can <laughs> check out Brooke and myself interview Andrea, one half of the Philly John teams. And we find out all the scoop about how they prepared, about what it was like for them to apply. We find out how out of towners came about. We even get to discuss them going back to the school that they met, Kutztown University. So if you haven't checked that interview out, it is on this YouTube page, or you can go back and listen to it on your favorite podcast platform. Form. Brooke, you are amazing as You're always. Amazing, and maybe we'll see Andrea on Big Brother next. Who oh, knows? Oh, that's right. She's that's looking at. She's looking to 
join the next show. I will say next week they end up in a new country they've never been to before. They're going to Slovenia. And and in a rare twist that does not happen, there's a second express pass. Who's going to get it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Uh, We have to make a bet. Who do you think will get the express pass? Okay, so just if you didn't, I know you don't like to watch the previews, so I'm gonna give you just a little bit of a, a clue. Did we see because, somebody running? Oh, cause oh yeah. wait, oh it was, I did see that preview. I did. Well, oh. mind you, mind you, mind you, how I saw the preview because <laughs> the episode was over, and you know me, I'm gonna get my photo because I was like, where everybody at? Let me get their photo, and I saw Corey being like, look. And so I looked and I saw it was Rob and Corey and it was the brothers. And I heard the brothers saying we could take them. So I don't. We can beat Rob. We can beat Rob. They were going up a lot of stairs. I'm like we can beat Rob. So my, my, is, is it Rob and Corey? Is it Greg and John? Have Robin and Chelsea just followed them there and snuck in front of them? Who knows? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Or Steve and Annalise. She scoots. She's like a little scooter. And I'm cool with all of it. I'm going what to do you go. Think? I'm going to go with the brothers. Ooh, I'm gonna go with Rob and Corey. I don't know why, but I, okay, I just I'm, feel like Rob would not have it. He's oh, I know. I feel like movie. Rob is gonna like you know uh, go into overdrive. So tune in next week to see if Brooke or I were were right. And again, this has been your Purple Pants podcast coverage of the Pit Stop. We will be back next week covering episode eight. We will. Bacon won't. <laughs> see you later. Guten Nacht. Bye. Pit 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 stop it's a pit stop pit 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 stop it's it's a pit stop pit 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 stop